Hi everyone, Chris Anderson with Mount Comfort RV. Well, today we're gonna do a video in the showroom because it's raining like crazy outside. So we got one all cleaned up, brought it inside for you. This is a 2022 Numar 3709, 3709 floor plan, which is a bath and a half model. And what we're doing right now, we're trying to get some units in on the showroom floor to do the videos of the stuff that uh, maybe should have sold by now, but hasn't. So uh, we, we ended up getting a lot of 2022s very late in the run, very late in that model year, right before the 23s came out. So we have a few of these and obviously the 23s are becoming more and more plentiful. So the 22s need to go. So there is a price opportunity here. Now, you know, normally I don't give prices on the video because there are rules, but those rules typically only apply to current model year stuff. So since this is a 2022, we can talk price. So this coach has an MSRP of $356,940 as it's shown here. We actually are marking this down extremely aggressively. How about a brand new 2022 Numar 3709 for 279,995, 279,995. So that's what you'd be looking at to get into a brand new full warranty in perfect condition Newmar coach. So uh, let's get right to it. Let's start taking a look at what the 3709 is. Um, as I mentioned, it is a bath and a half floor plan. Now you can do bath and a half all the way up. Obviously 45 footers are, are pretty easy to do bath and a half in. You can do it in a 40 footer. You can even get it down to 36, 37 feet, which is what we've done here in this 37 foot model. Uh, but there are trade-offs to be made. Uh, you know, you, you can't do the, everything that's in a 45 footer in a 37 uh, footer. Uh, so there are some different things that they did, but I think the compromises in here were, were very well done. This is a good looking floor plan. It's a very functional floor plan. One of the things I did that I don't normally do is I did turn around the driver passenger seats. Well, obviously in all our class A's, these seats turn around. The reason I did this was because I think when you're in a 37 footer versus a 44, 45 foot coach, I think you're more likely to to spin these around more often and use them as living room furniture. I mean, you have so much furniture in one of those 45 footers, you know, you, you almost don't need to spin them around, but not everybody wants to drive a 45 foot bus around. And so that's what, where this comes into play. So I've spun these around because I think a lot of times that would be the case. So we have a hide a bed sofa right here behind the driver's seat. So that, that does open up into a, a queen size hide a bed. There is a little bit of carpet in this coach, but very little. Most of this is the vinyl flooring. Our dinette is our combination desk buffet. So a uh, lot of things to talk about here. First of all, this does pull out. Okay, so this will expand like you see here. And there's two folding chairs underneath the bed that you can bring out. But let's face it, most of the time, diesel pushers are mostly used by two people. And uh, that's, uh, that's kind of how we have it set up here. There's great storage in this. I'm gonna move this chair away. Okay. Of course, we have a drawer up top. All these drawers are soft close and full extension drawers. Then this one is actually a file cabinet drawer. All right, put this chair back. Now we'll have to get down here to show you what's behind these doors. That is a really deep storage spot there with an adjustable shelf. So there really is more storage here than you would typically get in like a booth. And then this drawer opens up. And then down here, this is on another adjustable shelf and there's an outlet down there um, where you could actually put like a printer in there if you wanted to. All right, so that's a little bit about our combination dinette. Let's move over to the other half of the, the coach here. All Corian, even this backsplash, and this is all cut and sanded at Numar. We have a undermount stainless steel double bowl sink. You can always tell real Corian, it's heavy. Obviously we have a pull out sink sprayer here as well. Our upper storage, let's get a good view of that. Okay, nice little skinny drawer here. This is gonna fold down for your little scrubbies. Great pots and pans storage underneath there and a good spot for your trash can. Two more drawers, a silverware drawer here, and then three big drawers. 
All right, so lots and lots of space. Look at all of the countertop space you have here, all of the uh, workspace. This is a propane stove, three burner. This flips up to become its own backsplash. But when you're not using the stove, it's more countertop space. And then you could even, if you're prepping a big meal or something in here, you could even you know, migrate things over this way. Uh, the television can disappear down into uh, this cabinet. We'll go ahead and make that happen. Press of a button here. So this is gonna go away and give us our window back. But if you wanted to have um, other things sitting here while you're prepping food, that type of thing, this, this is great space for it. One of the things we gain in this floor plan that a lot of floor plans don't have is the fireplace. Uh, because they didn't put another sofa here, they put the, the Televator TV. You actually get a great fireplace. It's on right now. It's not throwing out any heat, although it would if we wanted it to. And then our passenger chair actually does um, have an incliner in it, so it'll recline like a, like a lazy boy chair. And then when you're going down the road, this is handy, but you could also use it here in the coach. Makes a nice little spot if you want to sit here and work on the laptop, something along those lines. Great table to do that with. All built in and kind of gets out of the way when you're when you're not needing it. This coach is built on a Freightliner chassis. So on our Freightliner chassis, we're gonna have the 360 horse Cummins engine tied to, with 800 foot pounds of torque, by the way, tied to an Allison six speed transmission, full air ride, full air brakes in this coach. So great ride and drive in this. And this is a raised rail chassis, which you'll see when we do the outside, there's actually great storage in this coach and in, in the underneath side. So for this price point, this is a full timers coach if you wanted it to be at a price point that you usually don't find those at. And like I said, we've uh, this is our, our oldest 2022, so it needs to go. That's why we've been so aggressive on price. Let's talk about some of our stuff up front. If we open this cabinet, you're gonna see, this is where the, most of our controls for the coach can be found. This coach does have an in-motion satellite uh, on the roof. And so by just turning that on and signing up for your favorite dish company, um, you can watch TV going down the road if you want to. You also have, when you're parked, you have a stationary antenna. Up top here, we have our Wi-Fi router. We do have a Wi-Fi range extender on here as well, uh, because obviously connectivity is uh, important to everybody. Our Xantrex uh, inverter control is here. Um, we have an inverter in this coach that'll help us run things off of the batteries, like the refrigerator um, and other, other items if you wanted to. Um, and then our, our energy management system is over here. It can detect now that we're plugged into a 30 amp service. It tells us um, how many items are using amperage, that type of thing. And mostly it keeps us under 30 amps so that it doesn't pop the circuit breaker. But the best part about this system, I, as I tell people all the time, is listen, you never have to touch it. It, it, it detects what service it's, it's in and um, you just leave it alone and it keeps you under 30 amps and that's a beautiful thing. Our, our screen here, um, controls several things. Uh, first and foremost, it, it's our holding tanks. It tells us anything from propane to fresh gray or black water, how much is in those tanks. It tells us our battery voltages. We can turn our water pump off and on from here as well. We move over a screen, we're gonna be doing our HVAC control. Uh, and, and obviously these are heat pump air conditioners. There's two of them on the roof. Uh, so that's more than enough uh, heat and air coming out of this coach. Um, the fact that they're heat pumps means if it's above 40 degrees, you can actually use your heat pumps to heat with instead of your furnace. So you'd rather use the campground's electricity instead of your propane. I think everybody can agree on that. So that's a nice setup uh, there as well. Um, and then lastly, we have our AGS, which stands for auto generator start. If you uh, want to set this up to where if the coach gets to a certain temperature um, and it's sitting in the middle of a parking lot and your dog's in here, um, it gets too, too hot in here, you can set this up to where the generator starts so that the air conditioner kicks on. Nice setup there. You can also set it for low voltage or a certain time frame uh, to come on as well. Um, we have our security lights uh, switch right here and our step switch that controls whether or not our, our uh, step comes in and out every time. Um, we have two awnings on this coach. We have the little over the door awning, which we'll show you. And we also have the main awning. Control for both of those are, are right here in this area. This is slide out control for the two front slides here. And lastly, our Truma control. Now Truma is our tankless water heater. Uh, so that is hot water on demand and plenty of it. So that works off of propane, but it, the nice part about it is it's actually very efficient because if you have a water heater tank, 
whether you're using the coach or not, it's heating water up and keeping you a hot uh, tank full of water. This system doesn't preheat anything. It just, when you turn on hot water at the faucet, it sees the demand and it can heat it instantaneously. And so very quickly you have hot water at the faucet and as much of it as you'd like. So great setup. That's a little bit about our controls here. We did option in the front TV as well. A lot of people wonder why we do that when we have such a nice big TV there. Some people are just traditional and they like having the TV here. This is kind of the tried and true spot that TVs were for years and years and years. Uh, with, when flat screens came out, it gave us the ability to put them a lot of different places. Uh, so most of the time you don't have to have one here. But the other nice part is um, sometimes people like to have like the weather channel on here um, and, and the football game on there. And you can definitely do that just to kind of keep, uh, uh, keep your eye on things um, in case the weather's getting a little dicey. All right, we have storage here. All of these cabinets are lined on the inside. Uh, that keeps things from moving around. It also keeps it very quiet. We have metal struts in here to hold the door up um, so that uh, uh, you, you don't have to kind of stand here and hold it up with this hand and load or unload with your other hand. So great setup. Um, all new Mars have JBL um, amplifiers and sound systems in them, uh, or speaker systems in them, I should say, uh, tuned for the coach. They actually, you know, do the little setup with the microphones in here and find the right acoustic balance and equalization, um, and it'll get very loud and sound very good. Historically, uh, I know that there's got to be some Class A people out there that watch these videos that will, will shake their head when I say, uh, historically, your sound systems in uh, motorhomes are not great. Um, one might even say bad. Uh, that's not the case here. This actually, you can crank it all the way up. It's a booming sound system in here. Um, and so if you are kind of a, an audio geek, you'll like it. It'll sound good, I promise. Dual pane windows throughout on this coach. It's truly a four season coach and, and you'll like that. All of our windows have the dual shades on them where you have the, the screen for daytime here. Um, and then you also have the privacy shade uh, like we have down in, in front uh, as well. Of course, this coach does have some of these, because I have the seat turned around, some of this might be a little hard to see. Um, we have our hydraulic uh, leveling, fully automatic leveling system here. This is, as I mentioned, a Freightliner chassis. You can tow 10,000 pounds behind this coach as well. So if you do have a heavier tow vehicle or a race trailer or something like that, perfect, no problem there. Um, this has the digital dash built in here and you can uh, sync your phone to the chassis, not just the aftermarket radio, which is so much better because when you can sync your phone uh, to the chassis, you can answer it just by touching the, the button here on the steering wheel. And actually, who's calling is going to show right on your digital display right here as well. So very automotive. They've, they've streamlined this. You know, uh, There's a lot of different companies that come in together to make a motorhome, uh, and, and sometimes some of the systems don't aren't always very well streamlined. This with the new Freightliner chassis is very well streamlined. So um, backup and side cameras, as you would imagine, and built-in navigation with uh, unlimited maps. And yes, you can program the size of this RV into the nav system so it won't take you down any roads that you can't go down, which is a beautiful setup, beautiful thing. All right. As we move on, let's continue back to the middle of the coach. I think we got to about right here. Well, I mentioned it's a bath and a half. All right. Here's our half bath. Let me open up some storage cabinets here. And then I'm gonna let Troy get a good shot of all the storage that's in this bathroom. Now the two cabinets I left closed in there above the toilet, those are just circuit breakers and fuses in there. So really no storage in those, although they did make it pretty by putting a cabinet over it. So for a little half bath, there's a lot of storage. There's a fantastic fan right above your head. Uh, the controls for that, by the way, are on the wall. You, you don't have to reach up. So short people, you know, they used to put these fans in and not put controls on the wall. And, you know, you had to get a step stool out for a lot of people to reach the fan. That's not the case here. The controls for it are on the wall. It'll open the lid. It'll come on. All that good stuff. And then I'm going to shut this because I don't know that we got a very good shot of it with everything closed up. I'll let you get another quick shot in there so you can see what the bathroom looks like when we don't have every door standing open. <laughs> Troy, Troy, Troy's on the struggle bus getting out of the bathroom. 
So sorry if the camera got a little shaky there. All right, as we continue on, um, our refrigerator. Now, this refrigerator is bigger than a typical RV refrigerator. Um, as you look through here, that's actually a good size fridge. Oh, it's on too, I can feel it's cold. Um, we have an option, we can put a bigger fridge in here, but we lose the pantry to do that. So we can go to even like a bigger, this is a residential fridge, but we can go to a bigger residential fridge, but it's a trade-off. Most people don't wanna sacrifice the pantry. This is where we come down to that 37 foot versus a 40 or 45 foot coach. Nice pantry over here. We think more people are gonna like it like this. And we've had very good luck selling these over the years like that. Now, as you look through this coach, something I want you to kind of see is you don't see any vents on the floor, excuse me. You don't see any vents whatsoever on the floor as you go through here. So none of those little registers where, you know, kids are gonna shove crayons and dirt's gonna get down in there, that type of thing. They've hidden them all very well. You, your heat vents are, you know, louvers like you see right in here or right here. Air conditioning. You know, you go through most coaches and you're gonna see the air conditioner um, in the middle of the, of the coach somewhere. And then you're gonna see all those little round vents throughout. You don't see any of that here. The, first of all, the air conditioner never protrudes all the way into the RV. The roof is so thick on a Newmar product that the air conditioner doesn't make it all the way in, just the ductwork does. So it's more like central air than a window air unit. Uh, secondly, they do a great job of making it decorative. Your returns and your outputs are all right here together. So it's very efficient that way. It's very quiet that way. And even when your slide rooms are in, uh, you have great airflow and it looks good. Um, and that's why they're the quietest air conditioners because they don't protrude all the way in. Newmar coaches use residential construction. This is not a laminated wall like pretty much everybody else out there uses in the RV industry. This is residential construction. What do I mean by that? Well. 16 inch on center studs, floor walls and ceiling. All the way around this coach, we are built 16 inches on center. They don't use a tubular stud like most manufacturers do. Wherever there's a stud with most manufacturers, the insulation butts up against it, but in the center of that stud, it's hollow. That's a poorly insulated area. With Numar, they use more studs and they use C-channel studs so that the insulation actually goes right up into the stud. And then they have another entire layer inside of that, um, of the foam insulation that gives you a much thicker wall. Nobody has a thicker wall. Nobody has a quieter coach than Numar out there. Same way with the floor and the basement floor and the ceiling. They are the thickest floors, thickest walls, thickest roof, and best insulated motor homes on the market today. That makes it easier to heat, easier to cool, quieter, your air conditioner's quieter, and they're very full timeable. So that's a, a beautiful thing construction wise. Now this coach has three slide outs. This is a full wall slide here. In other words, this slide room starts right here and goes all the way to the driver's seat. So we'll do a pan job there, get all of that. That is one big slide. So well, this is more square footage than any of those setups. And again, only a 37 foot bus at the end of the day. Um, so we have the main slide here. The kitchen is on a slide. And it's kitchen, fireplace, all of it. That's slide number two. And then as we come back into the bedroom, you find Slide number three, this is a king size bed. Very important to note that on a 37 foot bath and a half, a lot of times when you try to do smaller bath and a half, you're gonna get a queen size bed. A lot of people don't like a queen size bed, so this is a king. So, but this is on a slide out. Each side has room in here. First of all, they gave it a scotch more room recently um, to be able to make the bed because we get a lot of those complaints that it's impossible to make the bed. This bed's not hard to make at all. Each side gets a nightstand with an outlet and a little storage cabinet down there. So, uh, and these outlets have not only a 120 volt plug on it, but it also has a um, USB charger. As I open this in the middle, you're gonna see, yeah, it might be hard to see, Matthew. Get the bed, get up on the bed. So you've got an outlet back there. And then back here, it's hard to see, but I'm touching it. Um, there's a little plug that pulls out and you can run hoses down through there. Why, why would you need to run hoses? Well, anybody with a CPAP machine has already realized what I was talking about before I got there. So you can plug your CPAP in, machine in there, run the hoses down, and it's out of sight, out of mind. People love that. All right, let's do a 180 here. Let's look at our storage. I told you this coach is full-timeable. To be a full-time coach, you got to have 
some storage. So there's some clothes hanging space here. There's some more clothes hanging space here. We have a beautiful built-in TV in the bedroom. And then we have five drawers like this. Some are a little bigger, but you get the idea. And this pulls all the way out, so it makes it very nice to get to. Um, I say five, it may look like six. This one right here is all pre-wired for your satellite dish. Uh, not satellite dish, I should say satellite receiver or DVD player, whatever floats your boat. Okay, so the bedroom, I'm gonna have Troy back up a little bit. When we want privacy in the bedroom, we have a little pocket door here. This automatically locks when it's fully extended or when it's fully retracted. So there's your privacy. So if you did want to have guests over, you could just pull this door closed. They're not looking into your bedroom. Some people don't want that. That's fine. Uh, all right, I mentioned under the bed, we should have two spare chairs. There they are. I love it when a plan comes together. Note again, the bed stands up on its own. It's on struts. All right. Let's get to the master bathroom suite. Again, we have another pocket door. All right, as we come in here, right behind the toilet, we have the emergency egress door. Now we've done other videos on this. If you haven't seen this, it's very cool. I don't want to get too deep in the weeds on it, but you'd rather have a door that has a ladder that telescopes out the bottom of it uh, to exit this coach in an emergency, as opposed to trying to crawl out a window and just for fun, I'm going to show you the emergency egress window right under the TV, Troy, if you do a 180. Would you rather climb out that and try to stick the landing? Or would you rather simply open a door? Yeah, I said simply, right? There we go. Open this door, take that panel off, the ladder telescopes down, and you climb down safely. Obviously a much better setup. Uh, so... I think everybody will agree that's a good thing. But we have done videos where we actually pull the telescoping ladder out. So if you Google, if you go to YouTube and just do Mount Comfort RV um, emergency exit door, you'll find those videos if you're interested. Stackable washer dryer. Good amount of counter space around here, around the sink. And look at the depth on this cabinet. I love that. All right, then storage below. You can open this up. Two drawers. Okay. This is all engine access. You may say, why does that floor look like that? Like this? Usually you never have to take those off, but if they needed to get to the top of the engine to adjust a valve or something like that, this is where you'd get to it from. All right. The shower. I'll step in. Okay. More than adequate. Neo angle shower in here. I've got elbow room. It's not the biggest shower we have, but again, some of the compromises when we're 37 feet. Adequate, and I'm 5'9", there's space here. If you're 6'6", six, six, you could get in here. That's why they put the skylight in for you. Uh, your head would be up in the dome if you're 6'6", six, six, but it, you could definitely do it. And 6'6", six, six people know one certainty already is that you know, RVs aren't really built for you. So <laughs> we do the best we can. All right, lastly, got a nice wardrobe here with a drawer down below. All right, so that's a little bit about the inside of our 3709 Country Star from Newmar. We do have a central vac, I forgot to mention that. So this comes with tools that will reach all the way from the front to the back, so you can vacuum up in here without carrying your vacuum with you. Um, oh, I don't think we opened these cabinets, did we? Shame on me. This is all one big cabinet. It's all lined, so stuff doesn't slide around. One of the many things that make this coach quieter. I also think we forgot to do our entertainment over here, cabinets. Let's not forget that. That cabinet in the center with the glass door on it is definitely that way so that a remote control operates through that. There's a Bose sound bar built in above that. All pre-wired for satellite if you want. I also forgot to show the little cubby hole up here. I'm losing my touch. That's our, our little spices, and this is a convection microwave, so this works as an oven or a microwave, either one. All right, I think we've covered the inside. Let's go take a look at the outside. 
Okay, well, I hope you like the white background with the blues, the whites, the grays, silver, whatever color you want to call that. It actually looks very good. We have it nice and cleaned up for the showroom floor. As I mentioned, 10,000 pounds towing. It has the, uh, the built-in air chuck here on the back. So if you do have a towed that needs an Air Force, uh, needs an air supply line, like an Air Force One, uh, that's already built in back here. We can check all of our fluids very easily. And we even have a ladder going to the roof, with a lot, which a lot of the luxury coaches don't have. Unlike entry-level coaches, this does not just have a flat laminated back panel. There's nothing laminated on this coach. This has a nice one-piece molded rear cap with the camera built in up there. Doesn't look like an afterthought. You can tell that, you know, it's actually supposed to be there. We'll move on around. These are two of the batteries on the coach. There's a total of 10 batteries on this coach. These two are actually for the chassis. These are what actually start our engine. This big muffler looking thing down here, that is our diesel particulate filter. Uh, this engine does use, uh, like any new diesel engine, this does use the DEF. If you're not familiar with the DEF, it's part of the emissions after treatment on an engine, please give me a call. I can answer any of your questions you might have on that. This disconnect right here, that's what you shut off if you're putting the coach into storage. You wouldn't use that while you're using the coach, but if you did put it away in storage, wanted to make sure it's gonna restart for you next time, go ahead and click that off and that'll, that'll disconnect any power that uh, um, is being drained from these batteries. All right, we mentioned, showed you the emergency egress door on the inside, here it is from the outside. Notice there's no steps or anything here or no handles. Technically, you have a lock and a deadbolt on that door. You don't really need it since there's no handle on the outside, but keeps a kid from bailing out on you, I guess. On our basement, uh, you can see that this is uh, a full, you know, sometimes you'll just open a door and, and you'll just have metal, exposed metal on the inside, or you'll have an adhesive seal um, on here. You have neither here. This is a fully carpeted uh, storage uh, this, this bulb seal actually has a spring steel built into it. It's, it's uh, not something that's going to fall off over time uh, because the adhesive wore out. All right, as we move forward, one thing to note is these slides recess back into the wall on Newmar slides. That's not something the competition does. Most of the time, there's just a big plastic piece that covers the, uh, the sloppy gap there. With this, uh, they actually fit back into the wall. That's less wind noise, that's less chance for a leak. Uh, Numar's done them that way forever. It's a great setup. We move forward one more panel, um, and you know, on a lot of coaches right in front of the rear wheels, there'll be a compartment that doesn't open. Well, why doesn't it open? The, the reason for it is that's where the holding tanks usually are. It's the best place to put holding tanks because for center of gravity purposes, um, you want them down low, number one. Number two, it's right in front of the rear wheels, um, which are the dually wheels, so you have the most cargo carrying capacity off of that axle, so it's a great place to put your holding tanks. But Newmar determined they could actually get you an extra five or six inches here by recessing this back. They give you a little pegboard so you can hang tools and such here. This is what I meant by that bulb seal. You can take it off, but there's actually spring steel built into there and it just goes right back on again. And like I said, you're never gonna come out and find that laying on the ground. The thing I really wanna show here though is the thickness of this floor, okay? Compare this to the competition. This floor is like that thick. That's insulation. You've got a metal guard on the bottom, but then foam insulation there, and then the wood topper with the, with the carpet on there. It's a great floor. It's a very well insulated floor. You know, people talk about their baggage doors being thick, or they want to talk our values, and then you open it up and the floor is a quarter inch of plastic. Um, when it comes to insulation, you're only as strong as your weakest point. And if you're trying to keep things from freezing, you need the basement floor insulated as well. So that's what makes this a four season coach. All right, moving on. I told you this was a raised rail chassis. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means in the center here, that rail has been moved up about a foot over where it would be found on a straight rail, a less expensive coach. A straight rail chassis would, it might have some pass through, but it would have very short pass through, like four to six inches. Look at the height gained in there by raising that rail up. And that's a full pass through. You could put trays in here if you wanted to. That's something we can add aftermarket. Trays sometimes take a little bit away from the height though, so we don't always put those in. As we move forward, you can see another big pass through all the way through. And then up here, we have yet another huge storage area. Again, all carpeted, it's all very lit um, in here. You've got lights everywhere. So even at night, you're able to find your goodies. One thing with Numar is the star foundation. You can probably film through here. Uh, 
the big thing here are these trusses. All right, you need strength in a motorhome out here, out at the very outer edge. And what most companies do is they'll put some sort of an L bracket on the chassis here, and uh, they, they call them outriggers, and, and it will have some support out here, but not a lot. Numar adds to it this 45 degree roughly uh, brace that takes all of the uh, weight, the stresses from this very exterior wall and puts them back towards the center of the chassis. And then they, they weld to another steel rail that's below the floor here. And that gets the, lowers the center of gravity, adds to the strength of it to where they can do things like full wall slides without worrying about sidewall uh, cracks um, stress fractures, that type of thing. They don't have to worry about the strength of it um, since they've introduced the STAR foundation several years ago. Um, STAR stands for strong, true, and robust, and that's a very good way to describe uh, what they've done there. Our fuel can be filled from either side of this motorhome. It's one 100 gallon tank in the middle, but you can fill it from either side. So when you're pulling into that fuel station, you don't worry about which side the, the pump is on. If you see an open pump you can get to, grab it, you're good to go. The Country Star offers Alcoa aluminum wheels. You'll find on a lot of coaches where they're trying to keep the price down, you're gonna find steel wheels with hubcaps on them and they make that real tinny sound when you knock on them. Not gonna happen here. That's an actual aluminum wheel. There are benefits to that as well. Aluminum wheels not only look better, you know, I'm a guy. Of course I like aluminum wheels, but they're, they also run cooler because aluminum dissipates heat better than steel does. So heat is our enemy when we're going down the road. What usually causes a blowout, um, other than a out of date tire um, or maybe low pressure is heat. Um, and those things all low pressure and an out of date tire is gonna heat up. And if it's on a steel rim, it's much more likely to have an issue than if it's on an aluminum rim that's dissipating the heat well. I mentioned earlier, we have two awnings. Let's take a look at those. We have the main awning with a metal wrap on it there. That does go over the kitchen slide and extends eight feet from the coach. This coach also has an awning over the door. This one extends out, I don't know, maybe three feet or so, so that when you're coming and going out of the coach, you've, you're not getting rained on and rain's not getting in your coach as well. Nice grab handle here. As we come over here, we've got the flagpole holder. This comes with a little stainless insert that drops down in here, and then your flagpole drops into that. So you're not zip tying it to your awning like a lot of people do flags, nothing wrong with that, but this is obviously a much cleaner look. Side cameras that are turn signal activated are standard feature on here. All right, as we work our way around to the front, we're a little tight here, but we're gonna get it done. This is an Onan diesel generator 8KW. So. 8 kilowatts, it's more than enough to run both air conditioners at full blast and anything else you want to run in there. Our air horns are inside of the coach here instead of up on the roof where they're going to be more holes in the roof and probably rust up up there. They're, they're uh, nice and protected in here and believe me, you can hear them. Uh, and we even have air chucks in here where we can plug in um, an airline, air up our own tires uh, just from the compressor that's built into the engine. All right, in our front left compartment here, you're going to see a lot of fuses and such. These are the Freightliner, this is the Freightliner fuse panel in here. Now, Numar's done a wonderful thing in give, giving you the little uh, spare fuses that you might see right here. So, those are just extras. And if you ever did blow a fuse in here, or in here, or in here, you probably have the spare right there uh, so that life goes on very quickly. There's also a rip cord in here, that little guy. That's what opens uh, our, our access to the generator in the nose of the coach. Moving on back. You can see we have our fuel fill on the passenger side, as to, or driver's side rather, as promised. We have our propane bottle in here and then a pull-out tray with eight batteries on it. Makes it very easy to do your battery maintenance. Moving back, we've kind of already seen this from the other side, but these are the two big pass-through bays. And we'll work our way back to the wet bay. Now, unlike a lot of other coaches, this is actually, uh, has everything inside. What I mean by everything is, so many times, how many times have you seen the sewer termination point exposed out here, or the handles that you pull exposed out here? Well, I've got news for you. If they're exposed, they can freeze. Um, and it doesn't really matter if your fresh water is not frozen. If you can't get rid of your wastewater, eventually that's going to be just as big a problem as your fresh water being frozen. So having this inside in an insulated, 
and heated compartment. When your furnace is running, there's heat coming into this area and to your holding tanks so that you don't have freeze up issues. We do have hot and cold water out here so you can uh, wash your hands, wash your dog, wash your car, whatever. Uh, they have the easy hose here with all the pink in it. That's an easy winterization hose. Uh, basically, you when you get ready to winterize this coach, other than draining the fluids, uh, basically the next step is going to be to put this down inside a bottle of RV antifreeze, turn these two valves right here, and then go run water at all of your points inside and outside the coach until you get pink RV antifreeze that is now being sucked straight out of that bottle. So you have a little plug right here. So if you do get some water in here, you can just rinse this compartment out. That plug goes right there. Again, there's a light out here so you can do this at night. We have a whole house water filtration system, so every drop of water that comes through this coach goes through that filter. This is where we hook up our city water connection right here. Uh, and then uh, we also have um, a black tank on, uh, rinse on here as well, so you can actually, uh, while you're dumping the black tank, if you've noticed your gauges aren't quite that accurate or you're getting a little odor in the coach or something like that, you can actually rinse that tank um, while you're dumping and uh, take care of that problem. All right, moving on. We come back here, I mentioned earlier the DEF, which is part of the uh, diesel admissions. That's the tank where the DEF goes. And right next to it, all right, that's where your sewer hose goes. So it's got its own spot, which is what we want. It doesn't need to be mixing with anything else. Come back another compartment. This is where our 50 amp shore power cord goes. This does have a built-in surge protector as well. So you don't have to buy um, a surge protector for this coach. It does have one built in. Honestly, it's not the worst idea to, to double that up and use a surge protector at the post as well. And the reason for that is the number one job of a surge protector at the end of the day is in the event of a really hard spike, lightning hits a power pole nearby and you get a bajillion gigawatts coming through your, through your coach. No surge protector is going to be able to protect that without actually sacrificing itself, going up in smoke. Um, unfortunately, if that happens, uh, we, we've got a big boat anchor here because nothing that runs off 120 in the coach is gonna work, most importantly, air conditioning. Um, so this would have been the sacrificial lamb in that instance. The nice part about having one at the post is it would be first in line to take that shot and be the sacrificial lamb, and then this one lives, and after the storm is over, whatever's going on, you simply unplug your sacrificial lamb that was at the post, plug it back in, and you're back in business very easily. So not a bad idea to have two, but the first one's built in. So that's, that's a great thing. Most diesel pushers do not have a compartment here because you, know, you open this up, you're gonna see the side of the engine. Well, that's all well and good, but any RVer that spends any extended time in a coach will tell you, you can never have enough storage. So another fully insulated and carpeted compartment here is uh, ready to go. This motorhome also has the exterior TV option. This is on a big mag magnetic swivel where you can direct it either uh, either way you want to. And again, one of the things I didn't point out on the inside, but this is all name brand stuff. All the TVs are Samsungs. I mentioned the JBL speakers inside. The sound bars, both inside and outside, are Bose sound bars. You also gained another 120 volt plug with two USBs out here. So if you were sitting outside and wanted to have a great place for your phone to charge while you're sitting out here in the shade, you could certainly uh, do that right here as well. Okay, so people who watch our videos regularly probably think we forgot to do the slides in view, which we always do. So uh, we want you to see what the motorhome looks like going down the road. And this is exactly what you would have. Now this bed is full length queen. I could stretch out on here, no reason. If somebody uh, is driving and somebody else wants to come back here and take a nap, there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't do that. Well, what do we really wanna do? Usually we wanna be able to get into the refrigerator or the pantry. So here's the pantry. I can get whatever I want out of here. It's a little snug right here, but it's not bad. And then obviously anything out of the refrigerator I want is very easily accessed. And because of the way this door hinges, it hinges in the middle, makes getting into the bathroom just a breeze. So I give this a B. Um, it's a little tight right there going into the bedroom. That's usually not where you're going. Um, I could do better turning sideways here, but it's really not tight. And then right up here, it's very wide open as far as uh, your walkway goes going down the road. All right, let's take one final view of this motorhome. Well, since we're on the showroom floor, I thought maybe we'd get an angle we don't normally get, and that's of the roof of this motorhome. So one piece fiberglass roof rolls over the edges, 
This is the most leak-proof roof we have in our industry. So um, it's fully walkable, obviously. Troy and I are both up here. You can see, I'll point out some different features. Uh, this is actually our little antenna extender here for the Wi-Fi. So this is our over-the-air antenna. You might be wondering, hey, Chris said there was a uh, satellite antenna on the roof, and I don't see it. Well, it took me a second as well. I don't see it either. And then I remembered, during uh, recent months, there was actually a shortage on satellite dishes. So they were pre-wiring them all and then shipping us the dish separately. So we do have the dish. This coach will have a satellite dish on it that's all pre-wired for it. It just hasn't been put on yet because we didn't want to slow down the production of the motorhome just because they ran out of satellite dishes. So we have it. It'll get installed. It's all good. You can see our three vents here, the three black vents. There's two here, and there's one back behind Troy. That might be a tough shot to get. We don't want Troy to fall off the roof. You have two of these 15K BTU heat pump air conditioners. And then I'm going to have Troy slowly turn and there's a solar panel right there by the ladder, okay? So that solar panel just supplies a trickle charge to your chassis battery. No, you're not gonna run your air conditioner off that or anything crazy like that. It's just a trickle charge to try to keep those batteries up. All right, well, I wanted to take this opportunity to show you the roof because like I said, it's just an angle we don't very often get to see. Uh, some of the coaches don't even have ladders on them anymore, but as a, as a nuts and bolts construction guy, I like to know, you know, what's up there. Well, now you've seen what's up there. Thanks for watching.